Good morning, Friday, April 3rd. <clears throat> Welcome to the Daily Devotions. I decided to make them a little shorter. I think I've been going a little too long. <clears throat> I get excited and I want to teach everything at one time. So we're in Revelation. We're going to read the end of, uh, of verse 5. It says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Now let me talk about that first. Loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Uh, <clears throat> now, I want, I want to encourage you to watch this Sunday because my message this Sunday is going to be on exactly how much Jesus suffered and died for us. Uh, I want you how much he how he shed his blood um, for us to free us from our sins. But it says here that he made us into a kingdom. Jesus made us. God made us into a kingdom. Now I want you to think of this now. Just think of the of the different kingdoms that are in the world today that are strong. He, wants to, he made us into a strong kingdom. Uh, he wants us to be a strong kingdom. Uh, you know, you look at the United States, a strong kingdom. Russia, or China, all strong kingdoms. And back in the Old Testament, when, when he had his own people, the Israelites, he made them into strong kingdoms. He, he, he helped them to overthrow all the other kingdoms that were there at his time. That's what he did with his people. Now, what you have to realize is we Christians now are his people. And as he, called, uh, he calls us his kingdom. He has made us to be a kingdom. And I would add, uh, he wants us to be a strong kingdom. Now, even though this virus is affecting every kingdom in the world today, I, I believe this. I believe God is speaking to us today, to his people. That's who he speaks to. He speaks to us, his people. We, we, are, we are his children. We, we make up his kingdom, the Christians. If, if all the Christians in the world did what they were supposed to do, what God expected of them, think of how mighty a kingdom that we would be. We would be an incredibly strong kingdom. But... I'm not sure that we were doing what God wanted us to do. I'm not so sure that we were any different than the world. I'm, I'm prior to this virus. I don't. I, I'm not positive that that God could tell in our from our hearts those that really loved Him and those that loved the world. Remember, Scripture says you can't love both God and money. You can't love both God and the world. You will either love one and hate the other, or you'll hate one and love the other. And we were trying to do both of them. We were trying to love both of them. We were we were grabbing for material things. We were doing the things that the world was doing. I mean, I, I don't even want to go through everything, the, all the sins that we were doing. Now, now, I want to read something here from Hebrews. And what I want you to, to, to think of is the fact that you have children, uh, some of you. Or you're a child yourself and have parents. But as a parent, I can tell you, even as a grandparent, you love your children. You love your children. Today now, we're doing everything we can to protect our children. Uh, those some of you that have parents that are out there in the front lines right now, having to go to grocery stores, having to go to the hospitals to work, having to be ambulance drivers, police officers, etc., they're on the front lines and they're coming home to you and they're concerned. They don't want you to catch the virus. They have it. I saw last night where, where a doctor comes home from work, goes into the shower, takes his clothes off, immediately puts them in the washer and then showers really good before he even goes in to see his children. He's protecting them. Now, when you love your children, you also do something else. What do you do if you love your children? What do you do when, they, when they're going down the wrong path, when they're doing something wrong? Do you just say, oh, go learn? Learn yourself then. No, no you, you correct them. You, you discipline them. So listen to what God says, okay? I want you to hear this. It says, Have you not forgotten the word of encouragement that addresses you as children, God's children? My child, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. Don't make light of this. Don't just like shrug it off. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Don't, don't give up. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as a child. No different than you, and we're going to get into that. 
So he says, so endure hardship <clears throat> as discipline. God is treating you as his children. Endure all hardship as disciplined because God is treating you as his child. Now listen to this. For what, son, what child is not disciplined by their parents? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, but if you're not, then you are illegitimate children and not true children. If your children don't, if your parents don't, don't discipline you, it's almost like you're illegitimate. You're not even their children because they're not treating you like a child. Moreover, we have all had human parents who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his wholeness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Wow. Wow. So what's happening in the world today, I'll be honest with you, I just assumed that God was speaking to the ungodly. No, no, I'm, I'm st in my prayer time this morning, it was like God telling me, no, I'm, I'm speaking to you, Jim. I, through all this, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to my, I'm speaking to my children that I love. I, I'm, t I'm, 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 I'm disciplining you. I'm, I'm trying to get you back on the, on the right track. Please listen to him. I've read before in the Old Testament where it says, if my people who call me by my name, Okay, we Christians call God by his name. If my people call by my name, will confess their sins, will turn from their wicked ways, confess, just confess what you're doing wrong, and then stop doing that. He says, then I will hear them from heaven, and I will heal their land. God isn't expecting the unbelievers to confess their sin and turn from their evil ways. They don't have the Spirit in them. We do. So God is speaking to us today, to you, to us, to the believers. He's, he's trying to get our attention. Wow. I just wonder when this is all over, if it ever is over, if more people will go to visit him in his house. Remember, he said, he said, the church is his body now. I just wonder how strong the church will be after this. Is Will it be as strong as we are now, as we're, as God is making us now? He's making us strong. Remember, it says in, in, in Revelation, he makes he's making us a strong kingdom. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to make us a strong kingdom. I wonder how strong we will remain. Oh, I hope, I hope, we, I hope we stay strong. I hope we, be, we Christians become a mighty kingdom for God. Let's all do our part. See you tomorrow.